Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you guys five examples on how to integrate with the reversed power rule. And you guys can check the link in the description. I will have these questions typed out for you. So for the first one, we have the integral of 3x to the fifth power plus 2x minus 10 dx. We see that we have three individual terms, right? For the first term, 3x to the fifth power, this is not affected by anything else. So we are good to go. Especially, we have the x to a power already. So that means we can do the reversed power rule. I will encourage you guys to do all this to show work. First, let's write down the plus 1 to the power. And we know 5 plus 1 is 6. And let's write down a new exponent above it. Right? Once again, you should write this down along the way to show work. Especially if this is the first time that we are seeing this material. Okay, so 5 plus 1 is 6. This is the new exponent. Remember, this is the first step, right? And then we have to divide it by this new exponent. So we are just going to put it down right here. 3 divided by 6, like that. This will be the first term. So let's see what do we get. 3 over 6 is going to be 1 half. And then we have x to the 6th power. So this is the first part of the answer. Secondly, we have plus 2x. And this x is like the same as x to the first power and then we can add 1 1 plus 1 is 2 that's a new exponent and then right away we divide it by this new exponent so we divide it by 2 so we are going to have plus 2 over 2 is just 1 so you don't need to write it down because we are about to have the x to the second power 1x to the second power is just the same as plus x squared like that right the last term we have minus 10. Okay, where is the x? A couple ways you can think about it. If you want to match the form of the power rule reversed version, what you can do is you can just do this as x to the zeroth power, and then go ahead, add 1 to the power. 0 plus 1 is 1, and then we divide it by 1. But then the quicker way is that whenever we have a number, if this is dx right here, you pretty much, once you integrate, you end up with the minus 10x. That's all. See, 10 over 1 is 10. x to the first power is just x, right? And this is it. And don't forget, we have to add a constant. So we put a plus c at the end. This is the first example. Here's the second example. We are going to integrate the cube root of x to the second power dx. How can we use the reverse power rule in this situation? We can only use that only if we rewrite this expression right here into its power form. So let's do that. This is integral. And then remember, every time in calculus, whenever we look at a root like this, right, we write it as the power form of that. The Q root, it means the third power. So in this case, we are going to have x to the second, but then the Q root becomes the over 3 power, like that. So we are going to integrate x to the 2 third power, dx. So this is what we have to work on. And once we change this into the power form, we can use the reverse power rule to integrate. So what do we do? Well, we are going to add 1 to the power. And then 2 over 3 plus 1 is what? 2 over 3 plus 3 over 3. So we have 5 over 3, right? So let's write down a new exponent right here, 5 over 3. And then the second step is we are going to divide it by this new exponent. Divide by 5 over 3. It's the same as multiply by its reciprocal. So that means we can just put down 3 over 5. And this is what you should do to show work. At the end, you can write down the answer 3 over 5x to the 5 over 3 power. Technically, this is it. You can put a plus c. And once in a while, you may need to rewrite this back to the root form. So we'll do that real quick. This is 3 over 5. And then once again, the over 3 power, right? This changes back to the third root. So we will have the Q root with the third root. X to the 5 inside. And then we are done right here. Put a plus C on the outside. This right here is the answer. So here's the third one. We have the integral of x to the second power times the parentheses with x to the third power minus 5 inside dx. Let me ask you guys, can we just do the reverse power right here? 
and say this is x to the third power divided by 3. No, we cannot do that, because this x to the second power is affected by this x to the third power, because they have to multiply out, right? Remember, in order for us to use the reverse power rule, we have to make sure that term is not going to be affected by anything else. So usually, to take care of that, we will have to do the algebra. So we are going to multiply the x squared into the parentheses first. In that case, we'll end up integral x squared times x to the third power. We get x to the fifth power. If we add the exponents, 2 plus 3, we get the 5. And then we subtract x squared times 5. That's 5x five squared. And then we still have this dx right here. And now you see this x to the fifth power is not affected by anything else, right? So we can go ahead and add 1 to the power, 5 plus 1 is 6, and then we're just going to divide it by 6, which is the same as saying 1 over 6, to multiply with that, right? So first part, we have 1 over 6, x to the 6th power, and of course, you can write this down as x to the 6th power over 6. For this term here, we have negative 5x to the second power, let's add 1 to the 2, so 2 plus 1 is going to be 3, and then divide it by 3. Let me just put it down right here. So we have minus 5 over 3 x to the third power. And then we are done. Everybody happy. That's it. Example number 4. We have the integral of 6x to the fifth power minus 7x squared plus 3 all over x squared dx. As we can see, for the first time here, 6x to the fifth power, this is affected by the x squared in the denominator, right? And we must do the algebra first before we can do the reverse power rule. In this case, the algebra that we can do is that we can split the fraction, especially we only have one thing in the denominator, isn't it? So let's go ahead and do that. We are still integrating, but then we have to first write the expression inside as the first term, 6x to the fifth power, and then we put that over x squared, and then we do the same for the second term, minus 7x squared over x squared, and then plus 3 over x to the second power, like all this. And then of course we have the dx at the end. And now what? Well, we have to fix the exponents individually right here. So let's go ahead and do that. So the, for the first time, you see we have 6x to the fifth power over x squared. What can we do? x to the fifth power on the top over x squared, we subtract the power. 5 minus 2 give us 3. Therefore, for the first term, we will have the 6 right here, x to the third power. 5 minus 2 give us the positive 3. So this is what we have. Next, we have minus and 7 right here. x squared and x squared, they cancel each other out. Exactly, right? So no more, just minus 7. And then for this term right here, we have plus 3 over x squared. But then don't get too excited. This x squared is in the denominator, so this is no good for the reverse power rule at the moment. We must rewrite this as plus 3 is still the 3. But then for the x squared, we are going to fix that. This is in the denominator, so we are going to put it down as x to the negative 2 power. Okay? The x. And this is where we can finally use the reverse power rule. So let's go ahead and finish it. For the first term, we have 6x to the third power. So let's add 1 to the power. So we have 3 plus 1, and the new exponent is 4. And we are going to divide it by 4 right here. So the result for the first term, we are going to have 6 over 4. But we can reduce that. We will end up 3 over 2. And then we have the x to the fourth power. And for the second term, we have minus 7, there's no x, right? So to integrate negative 7, we will just end up negative 7x. That's all. Because the derivative of negative 7x will give us just the negative 7 that we need. So whenever you have a number, you can just do that. You don't have to go to the reverse power rule. At the end, right here, we have plus 3x to the negative 2 power. So let's go ahead, add 1 right here. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. 
and then we have to divide it by this negative 1 right here. So you see, plus 3 divided by negative 1, we end up with negative 3. And then we have x to the negative 1 power. Well, we are not done yet because we end up with a negative exponent. Uh, you can put a plus c right here, but then I want to rewrite this. This is 3 over 2x to the fourth power minus 7x. And then I will write this down as negative, the 3 should be on the top because the negative 1 is only good for the x. And then we can bring this part into the denominator like this. And this is how I'm going to present the answer. So I'll put a plus c right here. That's it. Number 5, we have the integral of 1 plus square root of x in the parentheses and then raised to the second power, dx. And we see that the square root of x is affected by the square on the outside, right? Be sure to do the algebra first before we can do calculus. So what we have to do is, let's write this down twice and then multiply it out. I will show you guys all the work right here. So let's put down 1 plus square root of x times 1 plus square root of x. And let's just multiply it out. You can use the binomial theorem to multiply it out, but then let me just show you guys all the little steps. First, 1 times 1 gives us 1. Second, 1 times square root of x gives us 1 square root of x. And then we will have this times that. Square root of x times 1 is another square root of x. And then lastly, we have this times that. Square root of x times square root of x just give us x, okay? So at the end, we have plus x. You don't need to worry about the square root of x squared and say that's absolute value of x for integration purpose. This is just fine. Anyways, at the end, we have 1. This and that together give us plus 2. Square root of x, and then we have the plus x at the end. So at the end here, we have this. We have to integrate pretty much all that. Let's put down the 1. And then for the second term, let's write down plus 2. And then for the square root of x, let's write this down as x to the 1 half power. This corresponds to the 1 half power, right? For the square root. The third one is plus x. And then we have the dx. And now we can go ahead and integrate. So first of all, integral of 1 it's going to be what? Just an x, right? Because the derivative of x gives us 1. This right here, we have plus 2 times x to the 1 half power. Let's go ahead and add 1 here for the power. 1 half plus 1 gives us 3 half, because that's 1 half plus 2 over 2. This is the new exponent, so we have to divide it by this new exponent, which is the same as what? We multiply, let's put it down here multiply by the reciprocal, which is 2 over 3. Let me put it down here. Okay, so we can write down plus. 2 times 2 gives us 4, and then we have the over 3, right? 2 times 2 third is 4 over 3. And we still have the x to the 3 half power. And then for the third term, we have plus x. This is like saying x to the first power, so we can add 1, which will give us 1 plus 1. That's 2. And then divided by 2, we get multiplied by 1 half. So we have plus 1 half x to the second power. Um, usually, you can write this back as the square root form. So let's write that. This is x plus 4 over 3. But then for the over 2 right here, that's the square root. And then we can put this down as x to the third power. And then we have plus 1 half x squared, and then we are all done, right here. That's it!